lot of news to get into here today, including whole story of dynamite in the last couple of days. I guess yesterday, John Moxley entering an inpatient alcohol treatment program uh, resulted in the rewriting of many of the segments on dynamite, changes to the tournament. Obviously, we wish the best to him and Renee and their child. And uh, hopefully this turns out for the best for everybody. Yeah, you know, we talked to him for hours on Friday night, you know, before the show that we taped and and, um, not so much after, but before for a while. And then we taped the show. And um, I mean, he was pretty stressed out as as far as uh, moving and, you know, I mean, just moving, just moving from Las Vegas to Cincinnati. Uh, which he was going to do. He was actually going to start doing that on Thursday um, after he got home from, he was going to do the show in, you know, beat Orange Cassidy on the show tonight. Then he was going to fly home and then he was going to, uh, they were packing and then he was going to drive from Las Vegas to Cincinnati with all their stuff. And, um, you know, the stress of the move, the book was the book came out on Tuesday, um, so perhaps that was added stress. Um, he was going to start promoting it, which um, you know, I mean, it was like his job. He knew he had to promote it. Um, you know, he talked to us some about, about the promotion aspect of it. Kind of wasn't looking forward to answering the same questions over and over again, uh, but you know, that's just part of it. But. Um, you know the i you know it's it's um i mean it's not like i you know i don't know i don't know I, I shouldn't say like it's like i don't know what was going on as far as like if if things had gotten so bad that um you know he felt he had to you know i mean it was like um you know he was looking at it it was a pretty stressful week he was going to go through kind of a personality change uh in aw and um he was pretty pretty much in the zone and everything in that last match with 10 just pretty much killed him and um but um you know as far as the timing you know was was what it was i mean it's it's it he you know it's like he made the decision and you know i'm really proud of him for making the decision you know he's been around that for a long time evidently it's going to be tough for him because he's you know he's a guy where alcohol has been you know like just like you go out hang out with the guys and drink and drink you know um i mean he's he's a drinker and i guess that he for whatever reason it came to a halt and he just for you know decided this is it and it's going to be it's going to be tough because it's, it's like it's it's such a big part of him doing that. Uh, but hopefully, you know, the, you know, the fact that he would go in, um, nobody forced him in, as far as I know, happened at, at a time when he had all of these things going on. And, you know, CM Punk said it pretty good. You know, he was talking about, you know, the you know, you 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 go through this hamster wheel where you just do what you do because it's what you do over and over and over again you have no downtime and this is what you do and you need help but you this, there's no time to jump off the, the hamster wheel and you know he said that it's you know he wished that there was probably a time that he should have done that not you know punk doesn't drink but you know just more in his case more due to injuries and and just mental health and um so, you know, he, it, you know, it was very courageous um, to go and do that right now because there's always a situation where the company's counting on you. And in this case, you know, and, and they were, you know, the company's counting on you. The book people are counting on you to promote the book. Um, you know, you got to move. Um, it's all the stuff going on. And I guess it was just this was this was the time. And hopefully... Um, you know, I mean, the fact that he went tells you that he saw something and he knew that something was bad was about to happen or presumed that and wanted to, you know, take care of it now before it got worse. And, you know, 
to their credit, you know, AEW is completely behind him and did not pressure him, to, you know, please stay for another two weeks, do your angle or whatever. It was just like, go and, you know, yeah, Tony Khan said it was the second worst week he's had because of the stress of everything of, um, the worst week was the week that, that Brody Lee died, but this was the second worst week, which given like all those weeks during the pandemic and everything were so bad, that's saying a lot. Um, you know, obviously Mir was pretty much put in the slot in the tournament uh, that Moxley would have had. And, um, you know, they did um, at the show, let me see if I have my notes here. Um, they did after the show, um, they did a thing with uh, Tony Khan, Brian Danielson, um, who else? Best friends, um, Wheeler Yuta, Chucky e. T, Chris Statlander, all came out. Um, this was actually not after the show. This was after Elevation and before the show started. And um, Khan was very emotional. He said that this was one of the hardest shows to get through to the end because he had to do it in such a short time. Um, and one of the toughest weeks outside of the Brody Lee week, when the week when Brody Lee died in December, although he also made a point that these situations are not the same and he didn't want people to compare them or anything like that. Um, but he said they both still involved great people. He got on his knees as the fans were chanting for Moxley. A lot of fans were doing so. He wished that John would get well soon and that he's missed. Brian Danielson got on the mic and reinforced that Tony Khan had brought up to close friends of his and he couldn't publicly address the situation with Brody, but he mentioned that the, um, he mentioned some stuff that, that um, he, you know, texted with Brody. Um, he said with John Moxley, um, Brian said that he watched an AWA show once and saw all the amazing wrestling going on, which she's sort of told the story a little bit in the past, but um, and probably will more in the future. And you know, he this is when he was considering going uh, to AEW. His contract was, I don't know if his contract was up at the time, um, but it was co either coming due or it had just ex expired. And he texted Moxley, um, you know, about watching the show. And seeing these guys like Phoenix and Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks and even Cody Rhodes and uh, basically said that uh, he didn't think that he could hang with these guys. And Moxley told him, um, you know, that you're Brian fucking Danielson and you're the best wrestler on the planet. And, um, you know, then he did a bit with uh, Justin Roberts where he pretended to choke Justin Roberts with his tie as a joke which is one of uh many jokes on the show but um yeah you know um moxley talked about danielson helping him a lot with a book and um you know moxley was very moxley was a key figure a very key figure in in uh danielson making the decision to come to aew and um so they're they're pretty close um and you know that's the you know, we, we obviously wish the best for him, and, um, you know, it was a very courageous move what he did to do it because, you know, everything that you are taught in these situations in wrestling is that, you know, you, you've got, you owe it to the fans, you owe it to the boys in the back, you owe it to the company that pays you a lot of money, and especially when you're on top and you're a top guy. And you've got to perform and everything like that. So to walk away from that is uh, is a pretty. It goes against everything that you were taught. I mean, one good thing is is that um, we have learned. I think in the last couple of years, or or wrestling has accepted things like mental health and alcoholism in a much more positive manner. You know, before I mean, I can just remember with uh, you know going back a generation with Brian Pillman with his rehab for his for losers t-shirt and things like that and perhaps you know if he had nipped it was, his it was rehab is for quitters quitters yes so buddy uh, had that perhaps, same shirt yeah and um you know it, it and that was the mentality that the that these guys had 
um, up until a couple of years ago. And, you know, it was also interesting, you know, and this is, this is again, you know, when, um, you know, I don't know his mentality on this one, but I do know like when Renee had COVID and um, I do know that one very, very well. Um, and his thing was, is that he wanted to be, he wanted to be honest and he thought it was important in that situation to be honest. And I think that that's the same situation here because obviously none of this would be said. They would, you know, keep it quiet. Like, like, um, you know, in the Brody Lee situation where they did keep it quiet unless he would have said, no, I want it out. So I know he said, I want it out or, um, you know, they wouldn't, they would not have said anything. So that's also him. You know, he wanted to be, you know, like if you heard the interview that he did, like, you know, you, I mean, you could hear the stress in the interview. I mean, he talked about a lot of the stuff, you know, on the air. He talked more about it off the air. But um, he, um, you know, it was very important for him to be real with the people. And that's why he put it out there and said, like, yes, tell the truth. This is what I'm going through and this is what's going on. And he wanted it out there most guys in that situation would it would, just, it would just keep it quiet and um and i think most companies or i shouldn't say most i mean every company is different um i'm sure wwe you know would even if he wanted it out would would not i mean i know in wwe there's people who've been sick and people have had this and have that and the company just says we don't don't tell anyone don't tell anyone you know so um you know especially with the covid you know it was always the the word which is actually an interesting one because Renee, in fact, did tell, you know, did make it public and they did not want that, that which is a different situation. But, um, yeah, so they they talked about it, punked a promo on it, and that is the situation. There's no time frame, if you're wondering, um, of what when he'll be back or anything. I mean, it's 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 an open book. Everything is is just you know how it all goes hey if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website wrestlingobserver.com if you sign up today you get access to every single one of them the 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week you can podcast them listen to them on the road at work working out in the shower wherever you listen to your podcasts and also full access to the wrestling observer newsletter and archives so if you love what you hear head to wrestlingobserver.com 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips